Oh no, I was so busy finishing up my semester that I forgot to write a new video for my channel, Dojiryu Philosopher. Hmm, what could I write about? Maybe I could write about why the WKF rule set isn't that good for a rule set for competitive karate. No, that, that probably is going to take some time. I want to actually do some real research on that. Hmm, I could do something about how blocks aren't really blocks. No, wait, Jesse already did that. I, I can't copy anything that Jesse did. He'll just do it better than me. Hmm, maybe I could talk about some of those books that I got recently. Ah, uh, but I want to spend more time with them, too. Like, they are really cool. Everyone who watches this channel is going to really want to look forward to that. Oh, I know. What's up, everybody? I'm the Gojiryu Philosopher, and apparently while I wasn't looking, I somehow got enough subscribers and watch hours uh, to be monetized. So <laughs> thank you all for that. Jeez. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I started this channel. Well, I started this channel about two and a bit years ago, but I actually started regularly uploading again on this channel about a year ago. And I did not think that I was going to get here. This was just a way for me to, like, have an outlet and a, like, practical reason to think more about my karate while I was practicing it. So, uh, for every one of you who is currently here, uh, subscribed and watching these videos, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I think that I have about, what, 1,225 subscribers. As of recording this, um, I'm recording this on Friday. It's going to hopefully go up on Saturday. At my usual upload time, <laughs> you know the drill. Um, yeah, it has been an amazing journey being able to make these videos and have people actually watch them. I kind of assumed that nobody would want to watch some random person talk about karate in his bedroom. But hey, here we are. <laughs> so. One thing that I realized, though, um, a while back, when I was still at only 500 subscribers, I made a video where I promised to answer some questions in a 500 subscriber Q&A. Uh, it's been about, like, five months since then. I have really dropped the ball. Um, and like I mentioned in that totally not at all staged opening monologue, um, I don't really have a video for this week. I've been finishing up my degree. And, you know, that has taken most of my time. So I figured that I would take today to just answer those questions uh, and a few other questions that I got since then um, as a way of thanking the people who actually cared enough to leave those questions and also as a way to help bridge the gap between this and whatever the next stage of my life is now that I'm graduating. Sam Laren asks, Congrats. Question, do you have any goals related to your karate? Or do you just take it as it comes? And I'd love to see your either Seisan or Tensho. Um, I will do the kata upload in a separate one. That's another thing that I said is that I'd show off one of my kata. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, okay, so as for that question, yes and no. Uh, I've been doing karate for an insanely long amount of time. So obviously my goals when I've started and my goals now are just incredibly different from each other. I, well... I have a couple of long-term goals, uh, especially my biggest long-term goal is that eventually I do want to be a sensei, I do want to end up teaching, and I want to spread what I've learned to other people. That's kind of what I do here on this channel already, but I can't really teach you the techniques on video, and I don't really want to try. But one day I do want to pass on the like technical aspect of what I've learned to at least a few people to help keep it going and to, you know, help continue this kind of cultural legacy that karate really is. And for more uh, short term goals, obviously, I want to train more, I want to practice more, and I want to get as much information as I can. Um, I'm hoping at some point eventually to be able to go to Okinawa and train there. Um, that will also hopefully come with better access to some more written materials. And that actually kind of ties into what I'm doing academically, too, uh, which I think actually comes up in one of the later questions that I'm going to answer, so I'll leave it until then. Really, like, day by day, the things that I'm thinking about are keeping myself active, keeping myself curious about the meaning of what I'm doing, and trying to make sure that I 
can sustain my ridiculous diet. Uh, I eat a lot, so I got to work out a lot. Um, other than those kind of long-term and semi-long-term goals, I wouldn't necessarily say I have too many big goals uh, or really big solid goals. Although one thing I would like, and if if one of the 1,200 of my subscribers happens to know how to get involved in this, please hit me up. Um, my email is in the description of the channel. Uh, it's gojuyuphilosopher at gmail.com. I would definitely love to be able to participate in a mixed martial arts competition called Gan Ryujima that I've seen that has just some lovely, interesting fights, interesting matchups. So if any Gan Ryujima promoters are out there and they're looking for a weird American to sign to get beat up on the dojo, get at me. <laughs> All right, we got, we got our next one. We got our next one. Uh, Tim Davenport says, Greetings from New Brunswick, Canada. Nice. My uh, college roommate for the two years that I had a roommate was from Canada, not from New Brunswick, but that, that's a that's a side note. <laughs> Loving the content. What are you going to school for? What inspired you to start karate and favorite martial arts movie or anime? Oh, I, I love these questions. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, I'm going to school for or well, I'm about to receive my degree for East Asian studies. This was not actually what I started out with. I started off with a very heavy love of theoretical math and physics, and it turns out that I was not really the best suited for doing that as part of my undergraduate career. Still love it, still keep up with like modern scientific discoveries when I can, but in my second semester of my sophomore year, I kind of had a little bit of a problem finishing things out. Um, and I decided kind of on a whim to take a class called Modern Japan, which is kind of like a history and current events slash political economy class. And that just seized my heart just so firmly that I thought, OK, I have to take whatever uh, major that I can use this as part of my requirements for. Um, and the professor who taught that is still a really kind of influential person in my life and in my academic career. Um, and so I'm finishing up that degree well, I mean, I've just finished classes. My last day of classes was Thursday. Uh, I do still have some final papers to write, and I do still have a couple of finals to take, but overall, I'll be there. Um, I would like to continue on to a further level of school, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm probably going to take at least a semester, maybe a year in between now and then. So we'll see. As for what inspired me to start karate, um, well, technically, I wasn't the one who inspired me to start karate. I started at a really, really young age, which means that like most people who started at a really, really young age, it was my parents who signed me up. Um, they had a family friend who had a son about my age, and he was interested in it, and they wanted him to have someone that he knew at the dojo so that he wouldn't be super kind of out of his depth. And my parents signed me up. He stayed for a few years. I've continued all the way through till now. Um, but there was a point I would say that kind of is a similar like inspiration to start karate, which is actually when I first got to college, I hadn't been practicing super regularly for a while. So a, a little bit of a, a story here, but basically what had happened is um, the dojo that I had been attending prior to moving out for college had paused practice for a while because a restaurant that was in the same building as it had a fire and so they had to do renovations on the whole building so they had to pause practice for a while and before they opened back up I was already on my way to college um, and one of the reasons why I chose the university that I did uh, among many reasons was because I saw that they specifically had a Goju Ryu Karate Club they also had a Shotokan club and a lot of places had a Shotokan club but I was hoping that I could continue in the style that I'd been practicing and so when I got there, I started to show up. I went to a few practices. It was interesting. Different lineage than the one that I had learned. I kind of had to go back through and relearn some of the uh, beginning kata from that lineage as opposed to the ones from my lineage. It was a little bit difficult to work with. Um, and I wasn't necessarily super interested in keeping going. But about halfway through my first semester, I had just, you know, a little bit of a hitch in my life, kind of just a friend that I'd been friends with for a while stopped being my friend, and I was feeling pretty down about that. And during that time, going to karate club was really the thing that kept me grounded and the thing that kept me engaged in life and, like, 
wanting to continue to go out and explore things. And so that kind of like benefit to having that structure is what has kept me in the martial arts in general and karate in specific. And in a roundabout way, sort of that's why I made this channel is because it's a further way to ground me. And this is also something that I can take with me now that I'm graduating and I can't go to that club anymore. Uh, and then finally, favorite martial arts movie or anime? There are so many. Um, obviously, Kung Fu Hustle, Shaolin Soccer, these are mwah, perfect. I love them. They're wonderful. They're amazing. Pour them directly into my eyes. Also, obviously, the original Karate Kid, like, that's just a good movie. You, you really cannot get any better than the original Karate Kid for just, like, cheesy but wholesome and earnest martial arts movies. Um, as for anime, quite a few. Um, I, I don't actually watch a lot of anime that are specifically about martial arts. Um, so I'm gonna, this is a little bit of a stretch, I am aware. But JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, um, any, any of the people who watch my channel who know me on Discord uh, have probably heard me talk about JoJo's more than once. It's a great show. They've got the sixth part coming out soon. I encourage you to watch it, but I know how JoJo fans can be, and so I'm going to leave it there so that I don't give you a bad impression. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, the Invisible Sensei says, Congratulations, well-deserved, my friend. Are you able to talk about why Goju Ryu is so very important to you? Uh, I kind of touched on this a little bit when I was answering that last question about what inspired me to start karate or really what inspired me to keep going once I got to college. But first off, Goju Ryu has just been the thing for me that has been a real grounding in my life, really, for the last four years, honestly, actually, even for my entire life so far. Um, it's something that keeps me active, which is always good, but it's also something that has more of a kind of benefit to it, kind of emotionally and I don't want to say spiritually, but yeah, a little bit spiritually than some of the other things that I've done to keep active, like trail running or hockey. Uh, ice hockey is interesting. Uh, great sport. A lot of the people who play it can sometimes be very rude, though. Um, so keep that in mind if you want to play hockey. Um, but there are probably a few other reasons why Goju Ryu specifically has such a big level of importance to me. Um, obviously, like, I was practicing it since my formative years, um, and it really kind of sunk into me at that point. It made me not only feel confident in myself and my abilities, but it also gave me a lot of uh, skills and abilities to like self-motivate when it came to working out or even to self-motivate in other things. Um, and I also think that the, well, this is not going to come as a, a surprise based on my uh, URL here, but the philosophy of Goju Ryu um, in the kind of barest bones sense is something that has been pretty formative in helping to kind of shape how I interpret the world and how I interpret things. I've kicked around in my mind um, for a while the idea of doing a video that basically is like the Go and Ju and Go Ju Ryu are that's a Hegelian dialectic. Um, I do not actually know that much about dialectics, so I can't really make a whole video about them, um, which is why I haven't made that video. But to me, that kind of um, separate but complementary aspect of things has been something that I've been able to apply to a lot of different types of thought that go on in my life. Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of different reasons why Goju Ryu is important to me. Um, and another big reason why it's important to me, um, which maybe not like the most relevant to my practice most days, but it is still pretty nice, is that my mother also practiced with me for a number of years. Uh, she used to be a trail runner and she had... Uh, arthritis in her knees, so obviously she couldn't continue to do trail running, and so she wanted to stay active, and I had been doing karate, and so during one of my dojo's gashikus, we, uh, she essentially decided, hey, I would like to kind of participate in this and take a seminar, and she eventually started practicing with me, so it became something that we could do kind of together as a family, and 
while it's not necessarily the most important in my day to day practice, like when I, when I'm practicing, I will still occasionally think, oh yeah, my mother would totally beat me up if we were doing this drill together. And it's it's you know it's a nice thing to share with your family. I I think that people should be able to share things that are important to them with their families more. And you know what's more. <laughs> What's more cool than having a mom who's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to learn how to beat people up alongside you so that we can share that as a family. Pretty cool, right? All right. So those were the questions from the Q&A uh, video. But there are two other questions that I wanted to get to that I think are pretty nice. Um, on my most recent video, my video on traditional martial arts, where I called Ambo Jutsu a more traditional martial art than Sinkatsu, uh, Ken2000X says, how can Ambo Jutsu be traditional? when it's the ultimate evolution in martial arts, which, okay, fair dues, you got me there. Um, you know, I I was just thinking through random Star Trek martial arts, um, and Anbo Jitsu felt the most traditional to me, but I can't actually justify this. Like, there is a reason why I think it's more traditional than Tsunkatsu, and that's the point, is it's not that it's like a super traditional martial art, but it's more traditional. They've got all of the random kanji that are all around uh, one of them says Udusai. I, I don't I don't know why they thought that would be a good background detail, um, but they did it. And they wear a uniform and they say Onegashimas like really bad like really badly say Onegashimas before they fight. Like there are clearly a lot of rituals that go on with there. Like it's the ultimate evolution in the martial arts, um, specifically because of the fact that it's like the logical extension of what a traditional martial art is, I guess. Um, there are also some other more traditional martial arts that show up in the Star Trek universe. I don't think any show up in the original series too much, uh, but there is um, the Klingon martial art of Mokbara, which is explicitly, basically, it's Klingon Aikido, basically. Um, in, in the early series in The Next Generation, there's uh, Tasha Yar, uh, the security chief, and she um, she is like an Aikido person, and she's doing Aikido, and then Worf's like, oh, I'm going to teach my Klingon martial art, and she's all like, oh, this Klingon martial art is basically the same thing as I, it's it's an Aikido, and he's like, no, it's it's uh, Mokbara. I think it's Mokbara. Uh, hold up. I'm going to check just just in case. Uh, Mok, not Moksbara, Mokbara. Star Trek. Yes, Makbara exercises. Yes, it is in it is in fact, uh, they say it's closer to Tai Chi, but no, it's Aikido. It's not Tai Chi twin. It's Aikido. I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe Aikido and Tai Chi are similar. <laughs> I, I'm not sure um, if I remember or if I have time, I'll include a clip of Mokbara here. Uh, you can make the judgment for yourself whether it's closer to Aikido or Tai Chi. But, you know. Have fun with it. <laughs> anyway, that's that's why Ambo Jutsu is more traditional than Sunkatsu. Like, Sunkatsu is less traditional, is really what I should have said. Um, Ambo Jutsu is an evolution, but it's an evolution in a more traditional sense. And then finally, this is just the best question that I've ever received at all, 100%. Uh, on my video about break falling and why that's the most important self-defense skill, Kenji Martial Arts asks, Wait, doesn't everyone carry a surprise crowbar? Yeah, you got me there. Um, I left mine in the car, so I'm not going to show it here, but I, I carry a surprise crowbar with me everywhere that I go. Um, I, I use it to beat people. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching me answer questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for watching me answer questions. Um, if you want to ask me more questions, feel free to go ahead and do that in the comments of this video. If you want to see more of my work, um, thank you. That would be very kind of you. You can go do that over at the subscribe button, uh, youtube.com slash philosopher. I, th I think I have the URL for it, youtube.com slash philosopher. Um like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. You know how to do that. Um, now that I am getting monetized, 
I am planning on pretty soon in the near future starting a Patreon so that you can kick me a few dollars here and there to fund my habit of buying karate related books. Um, recently, I made a wonderful purchase that I'm going to do a more in-depth video on the contents of these books later. Um, but one of the ones that I bought, I've got it back here, is uh, this book, Karate no Kokoro, uh, by Toguchi Seikichi. You may recognize it as the book that Karate Dojo Waku recommended people check out in one of his videos about how the, uh, I believe it was about how the Q and Dan system came to be. Um, don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll put up some text in whichever corner I put up my text in that will tell you whether that was true or not. Um, but yeah, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and for joining me in this channel and for everything, uh, for, for asking questions, uh, for making fun of me in the comments, please keep doing that. I can, I need it. Um, I've been the Goju Philosopher and take care out there.